Canadian taxpayers have funded another hate science study by the same doctor who published a fraudulent study showing that the unvaccinated were a threat to the vaccinated. This is something we spoke about last month with Dr. Regina Watil. She's the author of the book Fisman's Fraud. Uh, we spoke about how her book was pointing out that the Canadian government commissioned a study to use fictitious models to justify vaccine mandates. As her book has been taking off in the last month, the same scientist has now published a study about the efficacy of masks, which is not based on real world data, which we have, he could have, but instead he used models. So we're gonna try and go through it, see if the Canadian government will try this again with the same Dr. Regina Watil who joins us today. Thank you for coming back on Redacted. Oh, thanks for having me here, uh, Natalie. My pleasure. Okay. Okay, so you, since you have been on Redacted, your book has become a number one bestseller uh, on Amazon, which is super exciting. So people are starting to notice that the Canadian government used fake science to put in place COVID policies. Since then, the same guy, David Fisman, published another study about masks. Can you take, it, take us through it? Because it's a convoluted study. It almost reads like fiction. Well, it is a very difficult study to understand, Natalie. And the researchers came up with some pretty inventive, unconventional techniques to get the results they wanted. So this study was difficult, not just for the layperson, but even scientists are scratching their heads, wondering what these researchers did. And I had to read this study several times to really get the full picture. So I'll start by saying that whenever you have a Observation. Well, first of all, before you do that, what is their big conclusion? That's mask work, masks work to, tran to curb oh, the transmission? Really that that yes, they work really well. Okay. Highly effective, saved lots of lives and uh, lots of uh, monetary benefits. So overall, they're saying that masking is uh, a huge success. Okay. So when when you have an observational study making those kind of claims that is highly effective at curbing transmission and you've got massive benefits then it's highly likely there's something either wrong with the data or the methodology or the interpretation of their study so in this case we have problems with all three and it's it's <laughs> it's not really a surprise given who conducted the study um this study was by written by five researchers out of the University of Toronto. And as you mentioned, David Fisman was one of the main authors, as was Ashley Tweet. Both of those worked on the fraudulent science that was used to scapegoat unvaccinated Canadians. So both of them worked on this study along with three other colleagues. So I'm just gonna take you through, there's three big issues with, with this study. So first it has to do with the data they used. So they didn't completely fabricate the data like they did last time. Last time when they were scapegoating the unvaccinated, they used a computer model simulation to simulate fake data that showed unvaccinated were a greater risk. This time they look at Ontario data in 2020. Um, so when you look at the pandemic, it was called in the winter months at the end of winter in 2020. Then in the summer, on, municipalities in Ontario started bringing in mask mandates. But even though mask mandates were in play, you still seen a rise in COVID cases into the, into the fall, and especially as you head towards winter. But at that point, the researchers stopped their observational period. But even, but even so, even so, you see that in the fall with mask mandates in the, in the recorded data, the cases were higher than the pre-mask period in the first wave. So this is where things get really interesting. So the, the, the researchers claim that the recorded cases were a lot lower than what really happened. That if Ontario had actually done more testing, especially with younger individuals, then more cases would have been recorded. So they invent this new method to estimate the cases that would have been recorded had Ontario done this extra testing. So they apply a formula to the real data to inflate the data, but they inflate 
the data, especially before the masking in the first wave. So they're basically giving you an uncertainty principle saying it would have been worse. And so we are considering these high case numbers a success because we want to. Well, they're, they're basically saying, here's the real data, but the real data is an undercount. So we're just going to inflate those numbers using our method to what we think are the real cases. And then they inflate the numbers in the first wave more so than in the fall after the mandates. So, so if you look at the data in the first wave, they increase those case counts by up to 25 times what we actually recorded, Whoa. depending on the week. And then after masks were introduced, they inflated up to four times as much. So now it looks like the first wave was way higher than that second one, and that mass did something. <laughs> We're just gonna take them. Okay, we're gonna take the numbers we don't like and multiply them by twenty-five, and then take the numbers we do and multiply them by less, and that proves our point. Okay, do yeah. you think that the real-world data about masking already shows us that this is not true? Well, you do have an increase in cases after the masking occurred, but the story gets even even funnier when you look at what the what the modelers did next, because they did something that I have really never seen before. They now take those fudged data, right? And they fit a model to that fudged pretend data and pretend it has validity. So then they're not really looking at the real data anymore. They're using their pretend numbers, what they think is the real case, and they're modeling it. And this is the second problem with their model. They, they fit this model that is, is, is quite useless. Um, they put factors in there that make the model difficult to interpret. And if you were to extend this model past 2020, it would completely fall apart. And, and just to give you an indication, this is, this is more of a, a nerdy thing. I look at it and they fit like a, a cubic time trend. And what that means is if you were to extend this model out a few, year, a few years, it would be a wonder anyone in Ontario would be left standing. Okay. <laughs> it's truly like apocalyptic. A good math joke. <laughs> yeah, it is. And you look at and, and, but to be fair, they don't extend it past 2020 because it's absurd. Right. So they fit this fake data to a model and then they misinterpret the model to get the results they want. Okay. So, so because these are powerful people who last time were able to make a fictitious study that the government used to put in place policy to inflict on Canadian citizens, do you think, is it your worry that this will be used to reinstate mask mandates at any given time? Well, it's, it's being used to justify mask mandates. So certainly they're making the case as to why we should use them in a pandemic. And like you said, this was co-funded by the Ontario government, but also the Institute for Pandemics. So if, if you recall from, from the book, I mentioned how FISMIN has been promoted to lead the modeling unit in the Institute for Pandemics. And they seek to be a, a, a global leader in helping the world uh, through the next pandemic. So this study was actually published in the United States in an American journal. And this study was actually um, presented at a public health seminar at Yale University. So I guess the Canadian researchers are helping the U.S. <laughs> understand the benefits of masking. Now, just this week in Australia, the Supreme Court has ruled that vaccine mandates were against the Constitution, that they were illegal. And so now Australia is going to be hit with a slew of litigation for people who lost their jobs and lost a lot during vaccine mandates. So in those cases, this is me guessing, it's possible that when governments go to defend these policies such as mask mandates, they can use studies like this in their litigation. And that's why these might be useful because the rest of us can maybe see through it and be grateful that there's no mask mandates in place right now. But do you think that provides a use value for these types of studies? 
It for sure does. And even in Canada, we have a lot of studies, even by FISMIN, that are being used in legal proceedings to, to penalize those who did not follow the pandemic measures and to justify what the government did. So since I was on Redacted last, I've, I have have been contacted by lawyers who are defending people who are, you know, are, are in legal proceedings, including doctors who are at risk of losing their license because they didn't go along with the pandemic measures and the safe and effective narrative regarding the vaccines. Wow. Okay. Well, um, maybe tell us a little bit more about what you've been up to since you were last on Redacted, because you did have not only success with your book, but su success with lawmakers who are saying, oh, I see this now in a way I hadn't before. Let's make sure this doesn't happen again. Right. So there are a, a small group of, of, of politicians here in, in Canada that are not on board uh, with what the government did. And I have met with them and we're, we're discussing how to proceed and to, to make changes. So that's, that's promising. Also, since redacted, a lot of people are more aware of the fraudulent studies that went into justifying the pandemic measures. And, and like I mentioned, I have been contacted by uh, lawyers and individuals who are in legal proceedings to see how my book uh, can help them uh, in their proceedings. So that's also very promising. The other thing is that when I look at things like the mask mandate and other studies by Fisman, it becomes clear that there is a big pattern here, but he's not the only one fudging the numbers. So I have been looking into other researchers who have fudged the numbers to kind of put the screws to unvaccinated. So in particular, I'm, I'm currently working on something that was done by the Ontario Science Table here. And I'm trying to show how they fudged the numbers to put the screws to unvaccinated workers. So that's up and coming. And I'm pretty excited about that one because there's a lot of workers right now um, who are going after their employers for being terminated or put on leave without pay. Now, I did notice that Fisman took notice of some of the media that you've been doing and the success of your book. And <laughs> he wrote on X that, oh, yes, I remember this conspiracy. Ha ha. It's funny. This is making my my paper do better, actually. So it was a very condescending tweet. But it seems to me that maybe he's rattled by this. Have you heard any response other than this um, kind of dickish tweet? <laughs> No, I haven't heard uh, any other response, but that, that tweet actually made me laugh a little bit because I'm thinking, well, ha ha, he's laughing now, but I wonder if he'll still be laughing when his papers get completely destroyed in courts and he loses all credibility when it comes to anything to do with this pandemic. So we'll, we'll see who's laughing in the end. Okay. Um, I have, you know, I, I would interview him if he wanted to come on Redacted. It's fair for him to defend this. So uh, if it crosses your path, he can he can come on here and tell us how he came up with these things too. I'm, I'm willing to learn and listen. So thank you again for bringing us this data, this hate science, this concept of hate science. And uh, again, Regina's book is Fisman's Fraud. You can find it on Amazon. Give it a, a review, share it with your friends. And you can follow her on X as well. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you very much, Natalie. It's been a pleasure. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.